Hi, Briar uh, Fun Day participants. I'm Laura Skiller and Sailor, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Stablemate hay cart. Um, this is a nice sort of fall themed cart uh, that will be a good scale for all the different various Briar Stablemates. Um, you can see I've got some little pumpkins in here, and I'll be showing you how to paint those a little bit later. Um, but these are also optional if you want to put some different things in here as well. Um, let's start with the actual parts of it. So I'm going to move my little guy over here. Um, starting with just sort of the raw wood, which are going to be the pieces that we're going to start cutting cutting out and move on from there. Um, this is the piece that's on your sheet as the bas uh, basswood sheet. It's 1 16th inch by 3 inches by 6 inches. Um, you can see this one's longer than 6 inches. If you can only find a larger than one, that's totally okay. I'm just to use the 6 inches as that's the minimum amount you might need for this uh, for this piece. So if it's longer, totally okay. Um, here's the next piece. This is the uh, one quarter inch by one quarter inch and you need a minimum of six inches with this. Um, so this is again, this is a piece of basswood. Everything I'm doing today has been made from basswood. Um, this is your five thirty seconds by five thirty seconds and this is, uh, I required 24 inches for this one. Um, uh, so you might, so that's about, you know, it's about two feet. So that's that one. It's kind of a smaller square piece. I'll show you there. And then uh, we have this sort of kind of flatter strip piece. It's 1 16th by 1 half inch uh, by 12 inches. Again, that's a minimum if you can only find it in 24 inches or 36 inches. That's no big deal. Um, but just sort of show you it's kind of this little flat piece. And then we have this little piece. Um, it's kind of our little teeny tiny strip. And it is 1 16th by 1 8 inches by 12 inches is the minimum. This is 24 inches, but this is more than you'll need to complete the cart. So these are our different pieces of wood, and in a second I will cut to the video that I did earlier, so I'll be able to show you um, cutting everything out. Um, there's a various different ways you can sort of cut this wood out. I personally used, for this project, I used my Dremel, um, and I've got a... I've got a few different tips for it. I've got one in particular for this one that's a wood cut. So I've got a a woodcut specific Dremel piece. If you uh, don't have a Dremel, you can do a handsaw. Um, that works just as well. Also, a lot of these kind of littler pieces, too. I've also got a mini bandsaw that my husband gifted me a few months ago that I really love to use. It also works really well for this. So if you've got something like that, that works really well as well. Um, but bare minimum, something like a craft saw, um, X-Acto knife makes one. There's a variety of different ones. Or just kind of even a regular sort of saw you can get from the hardware store. You just want something to be able just to cut this wood down. So to start with, I'm going to start with this uh, quarter inch by quarter inch. So this is the thicker of the two uh, square wood pieces. And what I'm going to show you is, you know, the, the full length of this, so basically the length of the cart from here to here, is going to vary a little bit based on what stable mate you're using. Um, I'm using a couple of little bit larger stable mates today, so I'm using the uh, the little... Uh, walking thoroughbred mold and I'm using the standing uh, Frisian and these are both kind of on the larger side but if you want to do something on the smaller side um, like here is an older um, swaps this is an or older morning love you can see that it's not the same size um, it's not going to be the same size so you're going to need to sort of scale stuff down but what I'm going to show you is specifically how do you size stuff for the mold that you have versus just sort of going off of a set of measurements and so for this, what I start with is, you know, regardless of whatever the mold is, um, I'm going to take, this is the shaft, this is the shaft of your cart, that's what this part is. And this wood piece um, goes from here, it goes from the point of the shoulder of the mold, of, the, of whatever mold you're using, and it goes the full length of the cart. So what I start with is I sort of want to figure out, like, where is the point of the shoulder on my mold? So about here, that's the point of your shoulder, that's the point of the shoulder on the, on the uh, walking thoroughbred. And so what I do is I measure from there, and then I sort of come back a little bit. And then what I want to do from here is I'm going to mark this. Where my pen is. There, there's my pen. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to mark kind of what's the length of roughly what the shaft is. Keeping in mind with a mold like this, there's a reason I pulled this guy out to show you. Notice how he has a tail that kind of sticks out more. Compared to this mold, you know, he doesn't really have a tail that you have to accommodate for. But you don't want the cart to be immediately right up against immediately right up against its butt either. You want to give a little bit of sort of breathing room there. But with these moles with a little bit more tail, you have to be careful to sort of accommodate them to make sure that they can fit in the cart without, you know, bumping their tail in and not being able to fit. 
So we go from that point of the shoulder and then back for him, you know, it's roughly around here is where I want that, that to be. So I'll mark it here. So that's about the length of what my shaft is going to be. So then I'm going to, from there, I'm going to figure out approximately kind of how long do I want the cart. Um, you know, this is variable, you know, this is not an exact science. You can make a, the cart a little bit, you know, a little bit shorter than this. Uh, this is kind of about as long as I might want to make it. Um, you can maybe go a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller if you have maybe a bigger mold. Um, that maybe is even bigger than the Django. Um, so what I'm going to do is, so that shaft, essentially, that's going to be the part that comes out here, right? So back here, I'm going to then sort of visualize of like, I think I want my, my cart to be about that long. So again, I'm going to mark it here. And that's going to be the length of my cart specifically. And you don't have to label this. I'm just doing this for... Uh, for visual purposes. In fact, it's, you should probably not do that because it'll end up, uh, might be some weird thing when you turn your cart over. Um, so that'll show you kind of that's about the length of the horse. That's the length of the cart. Next, I'm going to take that kind of that bigger flat piece that we had. And what I did for this one is I actually ended up using the, um, the cart for the length of it. Um, so the width that he's got right here, but you don't necessarily have to do that either. Just sort of ended up kind of being an easier thing. And you can see when I was guesstimating the, the width of the cart, that's about how the size I ended up. So um, what you do from here, get a few of my stove mates out of the way. From here, I've got that shaft. I have approximately what the cart length is. And since it's going to work here, I don't have to necessarily cut this down or change that. But what I want to do from here is I kind of want to visualize, okay, so I've got the length here. This is going to be the right length. If you're doing it this way, this you might want to measure it slightly differently. Um, <clears throat> but from here, I kind of want to decide like, okay, what's the full square footage of the bottom of my cart? So for this one, um, I sort of pre-measured it. I wanted it to be a little bit narrower than it was wide, so it's a little bit more of a rectangle. And then I took straight edge, and then I marked it out earlier. And then from here, I would go and cut it out. So here's my little cutout piece. This essentially, this is the base of my cart. It's a little of an uglier piece, but it'll work because that'll be on the bottom. Um, so this is, this is basically going to be the size of the cart. So from here, what we're going to do is off of this size specifically, now we're going to use this to measure what are going to be the walls of our cart. So like this little guy here, you can see he's got kind of these different walls. We've got three walls, sides here and the back. We're going to do that based off of the measurement to make sure they match the size of this. So next I'm going to take sort of that flat strip piece that I had earlier, this half inch one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it against the cart here. I'm going to draw a little line and then I'm going to co-cut it out. <clears throat> Same thing for the other side. You know, we'll pretend I've already got that piece cut out. We're going to measure out another one, mark it, cut it out. And then from here, what we're going to do, we've got, you know, our two pieces are now magically cut out um, through the magic of television. These are already been cut. So we've got, this is what the width is going to be. So when I put this on here, it's going to be actually a little bit wider when you account for the width of the wood. So when I cut out this back piece here, you need to sort of measure it just slightly longer. So it's the same same wood we did as before, but instead of just, you know, the the width of the cart here, we need to keep in mind that extra little 16th of an inch on either side. So here I've cut cheated out a little bit, and here I'm going to mark it slightly out, and then that's how I'm going to cut that out. Magically, boop, there that piece has been done. So you can see that it's slightly a little on the wide side in order to be able to attach to those pieces. And then the next piece I'm going to move on to is there's also on this cart, I put a little kind of a decorative railing on the top of it. That's the next piece I'm going to cut out. All right. So I'm going to take the teeny tiny little piece that I had. That's that little tiny itty bitty strip. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut these the same length. So this should be marked. This is going to be the same size. Cut that out. Same size as the other one. Cut that out. And then the same thing with this one is going to be the same width of the cart plus a little bit of a sixteenth of an inch on either side. So that should end up being the same width as that. In addition, I've got these little kind of decorative bits that kind of hold that up. Um, and kind of the way I just sort of visualize this one just approximately, I'm not super um, exact with these kind of things uh, when it's really just more about kind of getting the look of it. Um, so that, you know, it was about that, 
that tall is how I wanted it. So I just sort of estimate, like think about kind of how much of a gap that I want here. And then I need to think about not only the height of the wood piece here, but I also need to think about the side, this piece here, the side of the base. And I've also got these pieces um, at the bottom that we'll get to in a second. So you kind of want to add, you know, add quite a bit to what that is. And this is about a little bit over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, um, and then sort of decide approximately what that is. And then I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to mark, make sure I do one, two, three, and then the back there's two more, one, two, and then the far side, one, two, three again. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that I need to cut out. as the pumpkin runs away. <laughs> okay, so I've got kind of all these little decorative pieces. So for the next piece, what we're gonna do is I am gonna move on to the glue part. Um, it's wood, so traditionally you can use wood glue. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing either wood glue or Elmer's glue if that's something you've already got on hand. Um, I'm kind of addicted to this Loctite uh, gel control glue, mostly because I can kind of use it for a little bit of everything. It's something I can use on plastic model horses. It's something I can use on wood. It's something I can use on so many different materials that work that are necessarily not necessarily going to all work with the same glue. Um, so I, it also it um, it sort of catches really quickly. So it'll it'll dry real fast. It'll hold instead of me having to sit here for 30 minutes. So this is basically impatient glue, and I'm very fond of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these little side pieces. I'm going to start putting the walls on the side and I'm going to take just this kind of a little bit of super glue. And it's important to remember with this is like less is more. Um, it's very easy to get too much and super glue is harder. To, it's, it doesn't grip as well and it doesn't dry as fast if you have too much of it. There's definitely too much of a good thing. So you can also see I'm also taking a little bit of that extra glue where there was too much earlier and sort of spreading it out. And then I'm gonna put it right up against the edge here, push it up against the base of my cart, against the floor of it, and just give it a second, and try not to glue it to my table. So this is not the best cutout piece, so I can sort of bend it in a little bit, and hold it here, and just let it sort of dry, make sure. And then now we've got it nice and stuck like that. So onto the next side. Same thing as before, I'm also gonna show you, you can do this on the edge as well, on the edge, edge of the, the base, instead of doing it necessarily on the bottom of the wall. Just kind of do whichever is easier for you. This doesn't require quite as much control. If you get a little bit sort of messy glue that ends up on the bottom, it's really not as big of a deal because it's the part you're not gonna see. And then we can, same thing as before, we just sort of line that up. Make sure it sort of goes up nice straight up and down kind of at a 45 degree angle once again we try not to accidentally glue it to our table so there we go again we've got nice quickly have that have that kind of wall kind of sitting there and i'm going to put it aside for a second it's not totally dry you can see it's a little bit wiggly just give it a second to sort of be patient because then I remembered there was a couple more pieces I forgot to cut um, <laughs> to show you to cut. There is also underneath the bottom of this cart, I will show you, is in order to get um, the wheels attached, what I added was an axle. So there's an axle down here that these wood pieces, these uh, wheels are attached to. But in addition, in order, um, because these were kind of a little, these ended up being uh, narrower because the cart's a lot wider than the horse is. I ended up putting a couple other pieces to support it underneath here. So these are the additional pieces we'll need to cut, the axle and these two. So those two little support pieces are made from the same material as, as the shaft. So it's that uh, 5 30 seconds square again. So um, again, those are gonna be the same width of the cart, just sort of that full length. Just measure it out, mark it, cut it, and there's one. And in theory, there we go. And there's another one. So those two are gonna go on the bottom. And then what we're gonna do for the axle is that's the piece of, the one piece of wood we haven't gotten to yet. This is the, um, this is the larger one, the, the square. It's the uh, one quarter inch by one quarter inch by six inches. So this one, we're going to have this be the width of the cart, but it needs to be a little bit wider because I'll show you on the cart here, there needs to be just kind of this little tiny bit of extra clearance for the wheel because we've got this little decorative railing on here. We want to make sure it just goes a little bit wider so when the wheels roll that they aren't, you know, brushing up against it. So our axle needs to, and this is something I'll just sort of kind of, you know, eyeball 
Um, so that's the width of it exactly. And then I add a little bit here and add a little bit there. And then I'll end up marking that with my pencil and then going back and cutting that out. So then magically our axle is cut out with just a little bit of width on either side. Going back to the cart, let's do the back side of the cart. Um, so it's this piece, it's the shorter of these pieces. And we're going to just go ahead and glue it here like this. So adding just a little bit of tiny bit of super glue, being ca careful to spread that out. Like that. Make sure you kind of get it as much around as possible and so not leave gaps. And then we're going to put that on the end like that and try to line it up as nicely as possible. Hold it for a second to make sure the super glue sets. And there we go. That's the that's the bottom of our cart. So we've got sort of three quarters of a box. Um, this is left open at the front. The, uh, when I was looking for references, I saw most of the carts that were kind of designed in this sort of style. It's kind of little farm cart style. They were open in the front. I believe what the idea is that they can sort of lean up so your pumpkins won't roll out, but you can still load from the front. So next, we're going to move on to the little the railings. These little pieces. Um, going to these little tiny, these little things that we talked about before. Um, I didn't do them exactly on the very end of the, the cart to, uh, to sort of hang them up. I'll put one sort of in the middle-ish, and I'll put one sort of in the end and then cheat it in a little. Same thing on the end and then cheat it in a little. So starting with this sort of railing over here. Actually, let me add the let me add the sh the shafts first. Apologies, I'm going slightly out of order. Let's move this out of the way. Next part I'm going to glue on is these shafts, and I'm actually going to show you specifically. Sh these shafts are actually notice they're rounded on these. Um, most shafts that you're going to find are not going to be kind of this this rough square that you see. They're actually are rounded, but then they they start as square and then they become sort of this sort of shave down. They're rounded. Um, so what I do is I do this with the Dremel, and here's the part where I cut in the video. Um, I have this sanding wheel. If you don't have a Dremel, you can also do it um, with starting with an X-Acto knife and being real careful with that and then going back over with sandpaper to sort of, you know, spending more time and just kind of very carefully making sure they look nice and round, kind of like a pole. Um, but for me, the way I had to do this, the easiest way for me is just to use this kind of sanding wheel and just go back and forth on it um, with that, with the Dremel. So yay through the magic of television. Now that's done. <clears throat> So with our cart, we're next going to move on to the cart and we are going to measure out exactly where the shafts need to go. And this is an important thing to pull in for your different mold sizes as well, because if you've got like a really, you know, chunky little draft horse, it's not going to fit necessarily in the same width that a little, a thinner thoroughbred or Arabian might fit. So, you know, we have our sort of thoroughbred mold here. Stay. Um... We want to make sure that there's enough width for him, not only enough width for our stable mate himself, but we want to make sure there's a little bit more of sort of some breathing room for him as well. Because when you put the cart on, there'll be some extra straps and stuff that are going to be attaching there. So you don't want it to be completely right against yours. You want to have just a little bit more of a little bit of breath there. So once we've measured it out, figured out kind of roughly, okay, this is where our stable mate is going to fit. We want to make sure there's sort of, once we have that space, we want to sort of center it. Sort of center it on the cart and we can go through and sort of mark it and mark it here as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these shafts and we're going to glue them same thing as before just a little bit of super glue make sure it's nice and spread out make sure it's not too thick and then put it right back up against where we had that little nice measured line so again, sort of pushing it down there. That's our stable mate. That's our shaft. Um, so same thing here. A little bit of glue. Don't have to go crazy. This one, especially because it's a wider piece, you don't have to use cover every sort of inch of it. It'll still hold with a good chunk of glue on there. So again, like using our line, measuring it up, and then confirming. Yep, that definitely fit. That got a little narrow. <laughs> Luckily, this is a little on the not quite dry enough side. 
so I could take this bit off, measure, remind myself to measure a little bit better next time, and then put that little that little thing right there. Put that sh shaft right down. Okay. So now that should fit. That should fit a little better. So, moving on. Um, now that we have the shafts done on there, um, I'm going to take these sort of extra outside support pieces and glue them onto the very edge. Same thing as before, just a little bit of light super glue. Put them right here on the very edge. Stay. And I actually cut these a little bit too short um, when I did these initially. You can sort of see that uh, that bottom thing I did a little bit differently because on the original cart what I did is I actually did them kind of on the inside instead of doing them on the outside this is a little bit of an easier way to do it um, but and you need to when you do that you do need to accommodate and remember there needs to be an extra sixteenth of an inch there Doo -doo. same thing as the other side go ahead and put this extra little support rod here Okay, so that is part way through the to the bottom of our cart. Um, we're going to have this axle that we're going to glue on in a second, but I'm going to put this aside because we've got an extra step that we need to do that before we can glue it. Um, so flipping the cart over, we're going to go back to getting these little decorative bits, kind of this little decorative railing, and like I talked about, like let's go about to about the middle like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of super glue, not over the whole thing, but just kind of on the, you know, the bottom two thirds of it, roughly. Because part of it's going to stick up, so you don't want to have glue on that part. That will affect your uh, paint a little bit later. So you want to make sure you don't have extra glue on this part on the other side. Just make sure it's on this part where it's connected to the wood. So you can do that there. Same thing with these. And we'll do these all the way around. Not too much. And kind of come to the end and then sort of cheat it in a little bit. And then just make sure when you kind of figure out what that cheated in measurement, just make sure that's the same that it is everywhere around. And you can eyeball it. You know, I don't I don't spend a lot of time measuring stuff super specifically. Um, because for me it's more important that the pieces fit together than they be in a very exact size. And I screwed up there. Um, don't do this. So I put too much super glue. I went too far up. Got too enthusiastic. Um, just remember not to do that. So this should be about the same, same more or less, you know, kind of width there. So there, you've got those little pieces done, and we'll speed it all the way around. Um, so for this on the back side, there isn't, I don't do a center because there's only two of them. Um, what I do is off of these uh, shafts, that's about the measurement that I want. So that's where my two on the back are going to go. Nice little cute, cute little decoration parts. It's finicky, but I think it adds a lot to the nice sort of finished product. And then same as before, on the opposite side, we're going to do kind of roughly down the center here. Little decorative piece. Not as crooked as I put it there. There we go. Nice and straight like that. And then... Same thing as before, I sort of eyeball it. Put this little decorative piece on, like that. Same thing as over there. A little bit of super glue. And our final of these kind of decorative sort of support rod pieces. So glue it on like that. And next we're going to go to the these extra little top railings. And it's just little teeny bit of super glue here, teeny bit here, teeny bit here. And be careful not to get too much. This is very easy to just get way too much and have it just kind of get everywhere when you push, put it on. So we try to avoid that part. 
and then just sort of put the railing like that. So it meets the top of those pieces. Nice like that. Same thing on the opposite side. Little tiny bit of super glue, tiny bit of super glue, tiny bit of super glue. Put that railing on, line it up with the tops of those little decorative pieces. And the same thing for this piece in the back. This one you might want to be a little careful about um, and put a little bit of super glue, just a teeny tiny bit here, because um, that's going to fit into that little, little teeny tiny gap. So we're going to be sort of careful wiggling it in there. So sort of put it like that, push it behind, and then I'll sort of push it a tiny bit out. This wood's a little flexible. Um, sometimes the another alternative instead of if you don't want to kind of do this little bending stuff because it does will give you a little bit of a bent um, kind of side effect if you don't have the other piece of railing uh, lined up perfectly because basically this should be a little lined up a little better than I have it here. Um, you can also cut this a little shorter to fit in there as well. So there I've got kind of the basics of the railing and next we're going to move on to the axles and the wheels. So starting with the wheels, um, these are wheels that I've ordered online. Um, it's a lot of work and an ex fancy expensive, expensive equipment to get kind of really nice wheels like this. Uh, these wheels I did on the original cart, I actually did with my Cricut and they're not bad, you know, for, um, for something I did at home, but they are kind of a thinner material and you can see kind of when I painted them, they got a little bit warped. So these are really not kind of my preference. Um, I just happened to do these cause I didn't have these on, on hand when I did the original uh, sort of sample cart. Um, these wheels I got from an Etsy store. There's a link in, um, in, the, in the supplies list. And I think these are really nice wheels. They're nice laser cut. And this is what they look like when they come to you originally. So they're nicely cut out. They've got a little tiny hole here that's going to be perfect for the uh, hubcaps. We're going to put, put through them in a second. Um, and they have these, you know, it's all nicely cut it out. But it is kind of nice and sharp here. Um, one, one thing I like to do to give it kind of a little bit more of that kind of nice rounded uh, spoken wheel kind of effect is I actually used a Dremel and kind of with a little tiny, let me see if I've got it, either with something like that and sometimes I've got some other little kind of fussy Dremel pieces. These little kind of different heads, um, these kind of diamond tip wheels, there's another one too. Um, these kind of pieces are really good for going through and what I do is I actually just go down the edge and I'll show you the video cut into me doing that um, and just try to round them out and the more kind of time you can spend with that the better the nicer they'll look um, and if you don't want to do it with a Dremel you can also do it with sandpaper you can do it with a um, either kind of like a box cutter or an exacto knife and you can kind of go through and and kind of just sort of get a little bit more of that nice rounded effect if you want to put that extra that extra time in. It's a little bit time consuming, but I think the effect looks really nice. Um, just has a little bit more of that kind of natural looking wheel effect. So the next step we are going to do the axle. And to put these axles on, you notice they have a little tiny hole in here and we've got some hubcaps we'll get to in a second. But basically we need a little hole in here. And there's a few different ways you can do it. You know, the worst case scenario, if you've got nothing else, you can kind of take a piece, you can take a, um, a pair of scissors that's a little, has a little sharp point, and you can kind of sort of drill something out like that. Um, it's not the best, and it's not going to go as deep as anything else. The easiest way for me to do it is either with a hand drill or um, with, the, <laughs> with a power drill. Um, and then I'll just sort of take kind of little teeny tiny piece. This is like a millimeter, uh, millimeter or so wide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill just kind of a, a nice little something like that. A nice little extra hole in there. And that's where our hubcaps, which are thumbtacks, we'll get to in a second. So the same thing as the other side. Nice little, nice little space for our hubcap. So here's my hubcaps. They were actually recovered off of an older project, so they're gold. Um, but the original ones were kind of this sort of nice, um, sort of burnished, sort of bronze color. You can paint the hubcaps kind of whatever color you want. 
and they come in sort of different designs and styles if you look around online. There was a few I suggested. I think they were off of Amazon, but um, different craft stores will have kind of different decorative thumbtacks. So this is something it's kind of fun. You can find different sort of stylings to go with it without that extra effort of having to make a really elaborate sort of hubcap. It's just it's just a thumbtack. We've drilled our little holes on both sides of the axle. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the thumbtack and we're going to push it through this little hole that came in our wheel. And these ones are kind of tight. I like them a little bit on the tight side. If you still want them to be able to rotate, if you want them to be kind of to move, you can either drill this hole out a little bit more or you can order um, these with a slightly wider on the inside. I tend to like them a little bit more like this because they're going to be a little bit more firm. Um, but if you want them to actually roll, um, you can do that as well. So what I'm going to do in order to attach the wheel, I'm going to start with this. So I've got my little thumbtack in there and I'm going to put some super glue on the end of it. And like I said, if you wanted to roll, you order maybe sort of a looser, um, looser or drill out that little hole, but make sure that you don't put the glue directly from the end of the axle up against the wheel if that's what you're, if that's what you're rooting for. Um, if you want it to be more steady, if you want it to be more secure, like, hey, that wheel is never, ever, ever coming off, um, then you can also put glue right up against the axle up against the wheel. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you that on this side. So I'll do the same thing, a little bit of glue here and then maybe a little bit of glue on the axle. And then you put it right up against there and then it's never coming off. It won't rotate like this one will, but it will be nice and secure. So we let that dry for a second. Take our cart and flip it over. And what we want to do is we want to align that axle about with that kind of decorative bar that we've got in the middle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put glue here, 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 and here, but just halfway down in the cart in the middle. So glue here, here, here. And same thing as before, like spread the glue out a little bit. Don't have, don't have too much. So you don't make a mess, but you also don't want to like have so little that it doesn't attach. So hold it there for a second. Just kind of let that dry. Now we have the basic shape of our cart. So next step, what we're going to do is we are going to pull out my, in theory, wherever I put the brush. There we go. I have all this stuff tucked under here. It's hard to see. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to the painting stage. So I have just a brush here. Um, this is a weird brush. It doesn't matter that it's a weird brush. It's just happened to be the easiest one that I had. And I have this aged wood accelerator. I also have some paper towels I'm sitting on. Secret tucked away. There they are. Secret tucked away paper towels. We're going to need these in a, in a second <clears throat> to try to reduce the amount of mess we're about to make. Um, so this is an aged wood accelerator. It cre creates a rustic look. And I found this at Michael's before I did this project. And it's really cool. And I'm really actually very fond of it. Because um, I've tried doing sort of different ways you can paint these. You can do it with sort of like a, a diluted paint. Um, you can do it with kind of a brown. You can try, you know, actually aging it outside. There's a different, there's a, if you go search on Google or search on YouTube, there are different sort of aged wood accelerator techniques with different sort of I think steel wool is involved and some other chemical products and they're all very cool but I, I liked this one the best of all the different things that I've tried so this is a nice very simple product I mix it up I just get it on a brush and then I just start brushing it down and you're going to get this nice sort of aged ancient like this cart has been sitting out on a farm getting you know, rained on for a long period of time without kind of that extra wood or without having to go buy the steel wool. So I'll kind of start doing it on the on the inside and you can kind of be sloppy about it. The instructions say you can leave it for a lot longer um, to get more of an effect. I have not felt the need to leave it particularly long. Um, so basically I'll just kind of get the, just basically start to get some of that glue on, uh, some of that paint on there and then sort of suck up a little bit of the extra because I don't need it to be necessarily that dark. So you can clean up a little bit that mess of just kind of the extra stuff. Once it sort of has soaked in just for, you know, 30 seconds, if that, you really don't need, I don't think a whole lot more than that. And so I just kind of do one section at a time. 
sort of take it off. And also, if you're taking this extra stuff off, the reason I'm doing that as well is it's going to cause it to dry a lot faster, which is what I'm shooting for. I don't want this to necessarily sit that much longer because I'd like to show you guys the next step pretty fast. Um, also, I just have zero patience. <clears throat> so same thing all the way around, putting a little bit of paint on it. And you can see, you know, it's already kind of a really nice match for those wheels. Um, I'll put a little bit of on the wheels as well, but they're already colored, so it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, you can paint the wheels if you'd like. Um, uh, you can add all sorts of different colors to these kind of things if you'd really like to. It's just sort of completely up to you. You know, if you want your cart to be white or purple and put little pinstripes on it, you know, I've seen different, like, really pretty carts that were, you know, purple with white pinstripes that looked really neat. Um, so it's just kind of like, what's the effect you're going for? So again, just sort of take, absorbing that little bit of extra, get that little bit of mess off of it. And there's a little section I missed here. We can go back in there. And something you might notice too is if you've goofed on the super glue, and I know I've definitely goofed on the super glue on this cart while showing it to you, um, the this chemical is not going to absorb. And so you might end up like that area here. You might end up with kind of unpainted looking areas, but that's not, you know, it's fixable. Uh, that's the big thing is this is completely a fixable thing. So with this product, it's not necessarily going to work. So you can see it's just not wanting to absorb there. But what you can do is uh, you can go take kind of go through either if you've got paint already it's just sort of some brown paint um, like kind of a you know brown horse color paint and if you don't have the right color you can also take the cart and I would go to like Michael's or something like that and go through the craft paint and you should be able to find something that's an exact color match for that so if you've got that little kind of like white unpainted looking area all you have to do is just kind of take a little teeny tiny delicate brush and go through and just sort of fill that area back in with the paint um, after the rest of this is dried and you should be able to cover that that up really convincingly especially because these are kind of this is kind of an aged look um, you'll see a little bit of kind of natural variation in the wood you know from the different exposure of you know different parts are going to get rained on and you know different parts are going to get covered up and different levels of sun so you'll see some variation and that's not necessarily a bad thing um, but you can clean up anything that's kind of really drastic, like that line's really drastic. Uh, you should be able to go and clean that up with um, just a regular acrylic paint. So I'm going to go do the, the back and the bottom still. But you can also see like here, this is the shafts from earlier are already dry. So this stuff can dry when you're, when you're toweling it off like I've been doing. It dries really fast and I really like that. Um, so you can move on to the next step instead of having to wait on it all day. <clears throat> so finishing painting this up. Make sure we don't miss these areas. So just get down to that last little bit. Finish with the paper towel. Any area that looks like it's still kind of damp and get you that nice sort of that nice effect. You know, also, if you want these wheels to match exactly, you can look around a little bit more. Um, I believe the same company that I got these for also does kind of some lighter wood color ones. I got these specifically because they're kind of a tougher wood. They're a little bit more durable than the basswood. Um, but you should be able to find different ones that are kind of that light color like the basswood that will stain to a more similar color if that's something that you'd like. So now that we have it nice and painted, Fling this off to the side, put this back in my secret hole, <clears throat> and then uh, we are going to move on to the grass portion, filling this in and all the different stuff they're going to put inside of our cart. So yeah, that's the basics of the cart. We've got a nice little cute, adorable cart going on. And underneath here, I have, this is the grass I ended up using. This is the long yellow grass. I think I got this one specifically from Michael's, but you can also get it online. Um, so it's this kind of nice long, you know, straw looking kind of material. And I wanted to have a little bit of a nice kind of liner for the pumpkins. Make sure the pellet, you know, make sure the pumpkins don't get bruised on the way to market. So what I did is just take this grass and take my little scissors and I could just sort of cut it to a, be about, you know, about an inch long. 
like this. And from here, we're going to start gluing it into the cart in a second. So it's about three inches long, so you can cut it into three little sections if you want. It's plenty of grass. It'll go a long way. So I've got all my little kind of grassy bits. And because I am too lazy to go grab the uh, hot glue and glue it in, which would probably be the ideal thing to sort of get this in. Just be careful not to like get things on your fingers. Um, I'm just going to go use the same glue. And this is after I've been saying be careful about it. You can just be real generous with the glue to try to get this on um, and to get it to stick. So here I'm using super glue again, hot glue. Elmer's glue would work fine for this too. Um, I'm just kind of doing it here just pressing it into that glue, making sure it also kind of goes up the sides a little bit and trying to reduce the amount of glue. I, I the amount of uh, grass I glue to my fingers, but that's kind of a hopeless cause at this point. Um, <clears throat> so just sort of giving it a nice little sort of liner, pushing it into the corners like that. And this is probably the amount of, of grass we've cut out is probably more than you need for the cart, unless you really want to start to layer it. Um, you can kind of layer it by letting this part dry. Um, you might want to go back with an Elmer's glue at the base here to make sure this doesn't come out. Um, if you really want it to be nice and secure, secure um, and stand up to kind of like a lot of handling. Um, so that's, I'm going to put a little bit more here to get a little bit more. A little bit more grass towards the front. And then you can... You can really layer this in there if you want, especially with hot glue. That's kind of one of the best ways to, ways to do it. And just sort of layer as much grass as you want. Um, that's about as much as I used through original. I think that's I think that's plenty. But if you want to sort of have more of a really sort of stacked hay looking cart effect, you can put more in. Um, let's move on to the pumpkins, however. Ugh. I've made a big gluey mess. Um, <clears throat> So moving on, what I decided to do is, in addition to the little bit of hay that I had in there, I decided to add these pumpkins. Um, they are linked in the supply list. I found them on Amazon. And they were originally just all white pumpkins. And they're, you know, they're cute. And you can get them in the orange as well. You can also order them in orange. But instead of just the white, I decided to go through and paint them. And the way I ended up doing that is I sort of just sort of took, you know, a few kind of cheapy... Um, basic paints that were about the color that I was looking for um, from Michaels, from Walmart. You can get them kind of anywhere. I've got an orange as well, a couple of different oranges. So I kind of took these basic colors and I went through and I just sort of painted them, you know, just a, just a tiny little brush. Um, and I also watered some of them down and did what's called making a wash. Um, basically mix a little bit of water and I'll show you the cut in here a little bit of water in with the paint in order to have kind of a thinner effect on it I think that came out real nice it um, it'll kind of sink into the indents on the pumpkin and it'll give you kind of more of a dimensional look to it and you can do just sort of a nice quick little layer but then you um, you know just kind of have fun with it uh, pumpkins come in a variety of different colors not just kind of orange I really do love the turquoise ones I didn't make those up the turquoise pumpkins do really come in turquoise um, and I'd liked kind of the more tomatoey orangey ones um, so I painted a lot of those one in particular and I also did kind of that that sort of mixed gourd color where it's the yellow and it's got a little bit of red on it I found red ones that had like kind of some decorative like sort of yellow stripey kind of colors on that and I just sort of went through and just tried to to imitate that as I painted all these different pumpkins so from there we just kind of stack them into our cart and that is more or less it um I will say that the pumpkins are totally optional like if you want to do a a cart full of chickens you can do a cart full of chickens um, I also found some chickens online uh, on Amazon, I think, somewhere that were about roughly in scale. You know, you can kind of do whatever um, whatever sort of you feel, like sort of fall appropriate um, different produce you can put in there. You can have a variety of, you can have a mix in there too if you want someone who's uh, does zucchini and does, you know, all sorts of miniature different produce instead of just the pumpkins. So then you kind of stack them in there. It's got this nice little kind of look to it. And that is more or less your finished cart for our little guy here um you know I was gonna say 
final words of like, you know, just sort of have fun with it. Um, this is kind of a nice basic cart. You can make all sorts of different sort of variations on this. This is just sort of showing you the basics of like, this is, this is how to do the shaft. This is how to do, you know, when you start with a basic cart like this, when you start with a basic cart like this, um, you can kind of take it all sorts of different directions. I mean, you have the basics now of you understand how to put the wheels on, you understand how to do a basic, how to do a basic shaft for a single horse cart. Um, and how to do kind of different walls and sort of playing with the different produce. And from there, like you can kind of go wherever you want with this. So it's a nice sort of starter project. Um, have some fun with the colors, have some fun with the pumpkins and sort of think about different ways. Like if you, if you enjoyed doing this, like, you know, what's the kind of the next thing you can do from there? Like think about kind of what are, what's a more elaborate, maybe add a seat, maybe do a, maybe do a four, uh, four wheeled style cart and just sort of have fun with it. And that is more or less it. Um, thank you to Briar. Thank you to the participants uh, for uh, following along with my workshop today. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you guys had fun. Um, if you are looking to get in contact with me, you've got my uh, social media contacts on the video and you can reach out to me on Facebook. I'm not usually on Instagram, but I'm definitely always findable on, on Facebook. Um, thank you again to Briar and to all the participants.